Welcome back to series number two in our run series. Today we're focusing more on quad and hamstring strength. The things that you're going to need is something solid to hold on to, some slippery floor so that your leg can actually glide on. With that being said, if it's super slippery, make sure that you've got a yoga mat for the other leg that's staying stable. You're going to want a thicker, long oval band. This is going to be attached to something solid while we squat. You're also going to need something to squeeze between your thighs. I used a foam roller, but you can use your shoes. You can use a towel, anything that you have. And then you're also going to need some kind of step that's bigger than what we used last week. So last week, our thickness was about this thick. Uh, I'm using a step in my staircase. You just need a higher elevation for that. And it's optional if you want to add in weight. Uh, I added weight into my squat this week. Uh, but that's totally optional. So hit the pause button, grab what you need, and let's get started. So we're going to start today sitting with both legs extended in front. And what we're doing is contracting the quad. So you're squeezing the legs and the muscles that are on the front part of the thigh and then relaxing. You want to do this three times. Once you've done it three times, keep that knee extended and then you're going to hip flex. So you're going to lift the leg up towards the ceiling. Hold it there for a few seconds before you lower it back down. We're gonna repeat that three times. Once you've done that three times, you're gonna keep that hip flexed, bend the knee, and then you're gonna contract the quad to kick the leg up towards the ceiling. Hold there for a few seconds. We're gonna repeat that three times. So now we're switching legs. You're gonna do the same thing where you're contracting the leg. Now, if you're like me and have a side that's injured, this side's gonna be harder to connect with but we're doing the three sequences again. So three squeezes just with the quad only. And now you're going to hold that contraction as you hip flex. So really squeeze that and lift it. Now for me, I can actually lift my leg up higher, but I do lose my quad contraction. So you can lessen the range that you go as long as you keep the contraction of the quad the entire way. Once you've done three leg lifts, then you're gonna have that knee bent and then you're gonna extend up towards the ceiling, holding for a few seconds, bending the knee and repeating. So we're gonna do a similar exercise, but now onto our stomach. So once you finish all of your reps, flip over. And what I'm doing here is I'm contracting my quad. Just be careful that you're not getting the glute involved here. So squeeze the quad, but let the glute be relaxed. Repeat this three times. Once you finish three times, you're gonna keep that quad contracted and then you're going to hip extend where the glute is going to get involved. So you're straightening out that knee, getting that quad to engage, and then lifting the leg up towards the ceiling. Repeat this three times. Now on your third repetition, you're gonna bend that knee, lift the leg up towards the ceiling, keep it there, and then you're going to straighten out the knee and bend the knee. Keeping that leg extended, so lift it up the entire time as you perform those three reps. Next, you're gonna switch sides and repeat that. So you're gonna contract that quad three times, not allowing the glute to get involved. And then you're going to keep that leg extended or contracted. And then what you're going to do is hip extend. So lifting it up towards the ceiling. Here the glute is going to be involved with that hip extension. And now you're going to bend the knee, lift the leg up towards the ceiling and straighten the knee. Now again, my left leg is the one that's injured, so I actually lowered and reset between every rep. This is gonna make it a little bit easier. If I were to keep my leg up towards that ceiling that entire time, I wouldn't be able to properly engage that quad, so that's why I keep on resetting. But if you're able to keep that up the entire time, go for it. So this next exercise that we're performing, you're gonna need a wall. So you're going to lean towards the wall, and this is very similar to the marching in the first series. So you're gonna reach back with the leg, and then as you bring that knee up and towards your stomach muscles, you're gonna go up onto your toes on the supporting leg. 
really squeeze the glutes as you bring that knee up towards that chest and you're balancing on that other leg. Here you want to perform between six to eight reps. And now you're going to switch sides. So you're reaching back with that leg, driving that knee into your stomach, squeezing those glutes at the top, nice tight core through this entire thing. So once you finish here, this is where that band is going to come into play. You're going to attach your band onto something secure and you can either have it at knee height or hip height. And what you're doing here is a deep squat, leaning back, allowing the band to pull those knees forward. And as you stand up, you want to squeeze those quads like we did in our first exercise there. Now what I did is I added I added a weight here to make it a little bit more challenging, but that is completely optional. And you wanna do between six to 10 reps. As you're performing this, think about big toes down into the mat. You wanna push your knees out slightly into the band and when you stand all the way up, really squeezing those quads. So once you finish those squats, now you're gonna to need to grab something to squeeze between your knees. It can be a foam roller, it could be a shoe, or even a rolled up towel. You're gonna do a very deep squat, as, as much range as your knees will allow here, making sure to actively squeeze the legs in working the adductors. We're gonna repeat this six to 10 times. And if you wanna make it more challenging, you can always add in a weight. So next you're going to hold a quarter squat and do a creeper walk. So here you can see I'm up on my toes, the heels never touch the ground, and I'm doing a little bit of a walk, a creeper's walk. So I keep turning on my toes here just so that I stay in the frame of the camera. You do not need to do that fancy turn, although it was actually quite fun to do, especially to try to keep your balance through this. But you want to perform between 20 to 40 steps. And your quad should be on fire here. If not, try pushing the knees forward a little bit more and get the bum down a little bit further in order to feel that quad. So for the next exercise, this is where that step comes into play. So unfortunately you can't see my leg that goes beyond this step, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually lifting up my forefoot. So just my heel is touching. And what that's gonna help with is not allow that other leg to assist the other one for helping you stand up. You're gonna perform anywhere from six to 10 repetitions here where the leg that's on the step is performing all the work here. So you want to lean a little bit forward, putting the weight into that foot that's on the step. You want to take all the weight away from the other leg and you're extending back just so that the heel barely taps the ground and stand back up. You do not want to take rest here. So 
So now standing sideways, we're gonna do a very similar thing where you're only getting the heel to touch. But this time what you're doing is you're going forward and backwards alternating, reaching back and then reaching forward, trying to get that heel to barely skim the ground, really making the leg that's on the step work. Now be mindful here that you don't want to allow that hip to change any kind of position as you're dropping down. People may have a tendency to as they reach down to almost do a drop hip, but you want to keep your hips at the same level as you perform this. So once you finish between six to eight reps, you're going to repeat this on the opposite leg. As you're learning this, it's okay to be supported by the wall or the railing. And in order to progress this for harder, you're gonna take your hands away. So next you're going to face the step and we have calf raises here. We're going to go back into that creeper position that we were doing those walks in earlier, except now we're performing a double calf raise. Now just like last week, you can stay here or you can do the single leg eccentric lowering. It is completely up to you. We are going to up the ranges here, so we want between 16 to 20 repetitions. So you can do 16 to 20 double leg, or you can do eight to 10 single leg. And you can see here, I'm performing that eccentric lowering where I'm using both legs to come on up, and then I'm using one leg to slowly lower down. So next you're gonna need a support and something slippery. So you can see here, I folded up a yoga mat underneath a chair and the yoga mat's folded so that the pressure into my heel is a little bit softened. So we're working the front leg here. So we're putting our heel onto the mat and then we're sliding that back leg backwards. Make sure the back leg that you're sliding is closer to the support leg. We're using the hamstring in order to pull us back. So the work is actually doing the stand-up portion, not so much the sliding back. You wanna perform six to eight reps per side. Start with a slow range of motion or a shorter range of motion before you start increasing how far back you slide. You wanna make sure you're in full control here. Otherwise the body will think that this is a threat and tighten up. Again, it's the front leg that's working and I'm digging my heel into the ground using my hamstrings in order to stand back up. So this is another hamstring exercise. I call this the hamstring dive. So you're standing on one leg the entire time here. And then as you hip hinge forward, you should feel the hamstring and you're using the hamstring to stand back up again. You wanna perform between six to eight repetitions before switching sides. Watch that your hip doesn't open up. It's very common to do this exercise and have the hip rotate up towards the ceiling but you wanna keep that hip position the same when you stand versus extending out into that full dive. The standing support leg can have a slight bend in the knee as well. Make sure it's not hyper extended.
So here's another hamstring exercise that we have here. We're into a glute bridge. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually digging my heels into the ground. And as a result, I'm actually pulling my butt closer towards my heels. And then I'm holding for about three to four seconds and fully relaxing before I start again. So again, with this glute bridge, you're not lifting up too, too high, but I'm digging my heels in and you can actually see my butt slide closer towards my heels as my hamstrings engage. You want to perform between five and eight reps. So once you finish your reps, now we're gonna go into a marching glute bridge. So now you're gonna lift up higher, squeezing the glute, and we're returning back to that first drill where we um, contract the quad in order to extend the knee towards the ceiling. So what I'm doing here is I go right, left, left, right, left, right. So I repeat it twice on one leg before I switch to the other side. Be mindful that you don't allow those hips to drop at all, that they stay at the same height. There shouldn't be a lot of motion from your hip up to your torso as you switch legs. You wanna keep your core nice and tight to help avoid that wiggle. And you're gonna perform this between 16 to 20 reps. Next, we have a variation of a dead bug exercise. So you're lying on your back here and you're pressing your low back into the ground so that it doesn't arch up. And then keeping your abs nice and strong, you're pushing one leg away. How far you allow that leg to go to the ground is all dependent on whether or not you can keep your core engaged the entire time you allow that leg to go. By changing the angle of where the leg that is resting is staying will also change the difficulty of it. If you hug the knees closer towards the chest and extend out, this will be easier to maintain that low back flattened on the ground. The further you bring the knees out so that they're more in line with the hip bones, the harder that's going to be. Another variation you can do to add a little bit more of a challenge aspect to it is the knee that's up. You can press it hard into your hands and you'll feel your abs contract even more. You're gonna perform between 16 to 20 reps. So next up, we have a quick dynamic stretch before the run. What I'm doing here is I'm sticking my toe up and it's almost like I'm trying to sweep off dirt on the bottom of my sock. You should feel a nice hamstring stretch here. So next we have the IT band. So you're gonna cross one leg in front of the other. The leg that's behind is gonna be straight and you're going to sink that hip on a 45 degree angle backwards so that you feel a stretch into your glute. This also gets the IT band as well.
So next we have a quad stretch. So you're gonna stand on one leg, bend the other knee and grab it with your hand. The opposing hand is reaching up towards the ceiling. Make sure you keep your ribs tucked. You don't want them flared in this exercise. I find it helps to squeeze the glute and push the knee that's bent down towards the floor. I feel like I could get a better quad stretch, but play around with that so that you feel a stretch in the front of your thigh. So next we're going to get our adductors, which are the muscles that are inside of our thighs. And we're doing a Spider-Man stretch here. So just be careful. Um, I was on a little bit of a slipperier surface here, which doesn't allow for a lot of uh, trust in how depth or deep you can go with this stretch. But what you're doing here is you're leaning from side to side, feeling a stretch into the adductors and then turning around. So next up is for our hip flexor. You're gonna go into a deep lunge and then you're gonna take your arms, reach up towards the ceiling and do a little bit of a spinal extension here, feeling a stretch in the leg that's further back. Then you're gonna open up into a spinal twist. So deep lunge, tuck that pelvis under a little bit to feel that deep stretch. Go into a little bit of a back bend there with the arms overhead and then open up into a twist. This has to be one of my favorite exercises to do. I find if my hip flexors are tight, I can't get my proper gait when I'm running. So next you're gonna go into a deep squat here. And first I'm just going to move my body from one side to the other. It's gonna actually open up the ankles here. Once the ankles feel good, you're going to do a hip external rotation. So I'm taking one leg at a time, pushing it out to the side. Now you can be more strict with this where you don't allow the other leg to move at all. Sometimes I like to do strict ones and sometimes I like to just kind of move my body from side to side. I find that it does a good job of actually warming up the hips. The stricter you are, you're more going to focus on increasing your range of motion in that external rotation. And here I'm going back into just stretching out my calves, using a downward dog, and then I'm using my other calf, or sorry, my other, my other foot to push down the heel to feel a deeper stretch into the calf.
So now I'm getting the front of the foot here and it's almost like you're pushing your toes into the ground here in order to feel a stretch into your shin bone. You can try going straight on, but you can also try emphasizing either the big or the little toe just to get different angles of the front of that tibia. Once you've done both sides, again, find something that's secure so that you can perform some leg swings. So we're gonna be doing leg swings out to the side and then also to the front. I like doing 10 of each, but if you really like this, feel free to add some more. So that concludes our little strengthening exercise. Right now is the best time to go for a run. Everything is activated. If you want something to try, um, if you are standing here, close your eyes and lean forward. You'll notice that your body actually goes into the perfect running stance. So try doing that and then bounce a little bit into the toes and then take a few steps forward. Try between three or four of these just to see where your body should be leaning forward and where it should be hitting over top of that toe in order for you to run. I like to do three or four of these where I lean forward, find that body position, run between 20 to 40 meters, and then just be mindful of trying to maintain that position in my run. Well, thanks guys for following number two in our running series. I'm gonna keep these going once a week for the next six to seven weeks here. Unless they become really popular and you guys want me to continue doing them, I, I'll, I'll make as many videos as you guys want me to. Anyways, go enjoy your run guys and I'll see you next week for series number three. Bye.